Well, hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this third episode of the Dollar High Doctrine, where we reclaim what it means to be the domestic church. I'm Ben, and I'm here with my wife, Holly. Hi there. <laughs> you always sound so cheery at the beginning of the episodes. You sound, like, nervously fast, so that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> well, we, we had a really good, like, in-depth theological topic to well, discuss wait, tonight. Wait, wait, wait. But then we had a really good conversation yesterday. Okay, yes. But even before we go there, I just want to say thanks to all our listeners for continuing to listen and give us some feedback. We've had some friends give us good feedback. Um, also want to say happy early Father's Day to all the dads out there. Hope you get to celebrate. I actually thought you'd forgotten. I know. I try to keep things a secret because you are so hard to surprise. <laughs> Oh, it's frustrating. Yeah. Well, you just need to figure out how to archive orders on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> You've gotten better at not peeking. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Not demanding to open presents the minute they arrive. No. <laughs> We're growing. But yeah, I hope hope everybody can enjoy it. I, I hope that we can go. My plan is for us to go have a picnic at the lake. And, and hopefully have nice weather and get to swim a little bit in the heat. Um, yeah, should be a good time. Swim in the heat. <laughs> Sounds like <laughs> an awesome Father's Day. <laughs> or swim in the water. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. So, like I said, we, we had a really good conversation. It just kind of just kind of came up when we... Uh, we're on our way to Lynchburg last night for dinner, and I thought this would be like the perfect topic for our next podcast. Um, we originally were going to go a bit more into theological depth with the definition that we uh, kind of walked you through last week, but then we thought, well, before we kind of get into that like self like uh, reflection on what our roles are in the domestic church. I think that the conversation that we had together would be the perfect thing to let others in on um, because it goes to the heart of what we're going to be talking about as far as aiming perf- for perfection and what that means for, for each of us individually and how we see ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what did, what did we talk about, Holly? <laughs> we were talking about expectations, which have come up a lot uh the last week or two at least in my world um kind of discussing with friends and um, mentors what are healthy expectations and where do mine fall on the scale um which has been interesting because there's kind of kind of what the world is telling me but also I feel a bit differently about it so that's kind of I ho- hope it pertains well to our domestic church life here. But mm-hmm. so yeah, we've been I've been asking a lot of questions about what are my expectations of myself as a mom, as a wife, uh just personal goals that I have. And um are they realistic? Are they good goals to have in the time that we are living in right now where we have many demanding priorities, mainly our children and um, maintaining the house as it needs to be and um, just making sure that we're healthy and okay, um, finding ourselves tired all the time and just running thin often. So in those circumstances of life, when our main focus is our family and you know, trying to do a bit better than just staying afloat. What, what are our expectations? What are our goals? Um, why should we have expectations or why should we lower them in certain circumstances? Um, right. And I think what, what played into this too was you've been doing a, a book study with your family about virtue and that's kind of brought to the forefront, um, of at least our discussion of, of what it means to live a virtuous life and how do we aim for that on a personal level, right? Yeah, so I think that's a good a good place to start is... So we've been reading... Um, oh, goodness, my brain. 
um, it Edward, was right here. Edward Sree's <laughs> new book, um, The Art of Living. There we go. Um, which has been great. Great great book to read. Very easy entry to virtue. It's the prequel to Julia Child's The Art of French Cooking. <laughs> yeah, not quite. But um, So anyway, thinking about virtue, right, and growing as Catholics in holiness, it's kind of a lofty goal. <laughs> and obviously none of us are perfect. None of us excuse me, um, come out of the womb saintly. We have to be taught, we have to be disciplined, we have to grow and struggle to get there. Um, So obviously, there's some high expectations when it comes to being a Catholic. And I think that there's kind of that understanding of Catholics in culture, right? Like, the Catholic guilt is a well-known saying I think of like we all feel this guilt because we haven't reached perfection or like you know we're not where we want to be or you have sinned too much like that's kind of the perception that there is right um and while there is truth to that because there can be very disordered perceptions of where we're at and um kind of viewing viewing our progress and where we're at in life and just our in a humility in humility viewing where you are realistically um where am I going with this Ben? (sighs) I think where we had arrived at for a good foundation for that conversation yesterday was that we were talking about the um the connection between self-image and expectation, right? Right. And the difference between uh, what's good, like a negative view of that, but also a positive. Right. Right. So uh, as, as human beings in general, but then as Catholics being called to perfection, right? Christ says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Um, We have this, this tendency to become overly scrupulous in there that. you go. <laughs> Those are the kinds of words I was trying to come to. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and and in, w- in which we we view ourselves in such a negative light because we're not where we want to be, and I think that that lends itself to a very unhealthy attitude towards self. I think that um, the best way that we can come to that that level of perfection and grow in virtue is to first say, okay, this is where I'm at now, and to love yourself where you're at, but then in love, know that you're called to something greater. And I think that you had said that that was kind of a revelation that you had in the, during those conversations. Yeah, I think um, it's come to my attention that there's a perception through the way that I talk about where I'm at right now or through my blog that Maybe I'm not, I'm like overly scrupulous and I'm very unhappy with who I am and uh, can't accomplish any of my goals and I am frustrated all the time, which to a degree is true. Mm -hmm. But also, I definitely do have some grace for myself, even though I think I I need to balance that out a bit more and give a little more grace. Mm -hmm. But um, I recognize that where we're at is good. We have come a long way from where we were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. And this is hard. (laughs) There's a lot going on and this is all new, right? And the raising kids is new. I'm in a new body every year and it's changing forever. (laughs) And my hormones are changing and our life circumstances are constantly changing. Um, the world around us is shifting a lot. It's hard to navigate when everything is so unstable. Um, so I think, you know, we talk to when we, when we evaluate how we're doing in life, whatever the category may be, we do usually come to the conclusion that, you know what, we're doing pretty good. Like, we're not quite where we want to be, but we're doing good. And that's kind of my view of where I'm at as well. Like... 
I'm always going to have these goals that I want to pursue and this place that I want to be that's better because I'm not perfect. And I'm never going to be perfect, but I want to get as close as I can. But Yeah, and I think it's awesome that you have that community around you that that recognizes that, right? That um, you've been able to talk to friends, talk to you know, different people in your life to say, yeah, you know, I, I'm very overwhelmed in one way and I, and I feel a bit um, unimpressed with with what what I've done because we, we were talking about uh, obligations that you set for yourself mm-hmm. and that once life gets kind of catches up to you at the end of the day you're like I didn't get any of this done mm-hmm. and I think the community around you has really stepped in to say okay you didn't get those things done but look what you did get done right. like the kids are fed they're still alive mm-hmm. they're mostly unhurt <laughs> yeah. and then like um you know they're, they're living their, their best life and they have no idea of the chaos in which they live right. you know and the house hasn't gone up in flame three out of (laughs) three out of five nights there's a meal on the table (laughs) you know like we're doing really good i think yeah Uh, especially not having like a a large in-person community where we currently live right we're very much in this um solo right now um we have much support but from a distance right Um, But I think, too, so, like, those are all excellent things to be accomplishing. And we are doing great because we are doing that, right? Mm. So then where where does this pursuit of virtue fit in Mm -hmm. when those are the only things you can accomplish, right? So I think some of what we talked about, too, is just, like, the lenses that we take on to view things. And part of this book, as well, um, is very much about... Um, doing things consistently, joyfully, like quickly, and um, easily. That's kind of the qualities of a virtuous person. Mm -hmm. So when I kind of look at beyond any other goals that we have going on, just like the day-to-day bare minimum things that maybe that's all we get done most of the time, like am I living those qualities in those bare minimum things? And the answer is probably no, (laughs) because I'm still, like, hanging on to those other goals that I wished I had accomplished, right? So I think that's kind of one expectation I need to shift of, like, it's not about exactly what I'm accomplishing, but how I'm accomplishing it, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. There's that saint quote that you always put up everywhere, and it's like... It's either St. Teresa of... St. Mother Teresa. Yeah. Two small things with great love. Yeah, that. And then there's another one that you had on the fridge for a long time. I think it was the little flower. Mm. It was... Uh, um, what was it? It was God moves amongst the, the pots uh, and the yeah. pans. What was it? Yes. Uh, know that even when you're doing the dishes, God moves among the pots and the pans. Right, right. Um, well, I think that's that speaks to striving for perfection in those times where you're only able to take on those minimum tasks. Mm -hmm. Like you're only able to take on what's been given to you by life. And so in those moments, having to find the grace to get through it, to get through it joyfully, and recognize that maybe this is a chance to to grow in humility or grow in patience you know grow in temperance prudence you know and um yeah i think i think that that speaks to a lot of new parents that we have you know especially if it's your first child uh, but now that we have two especially you know we had these lofty goals in mind for ourselves like um I won't get into them a little. I won't get into them at all. But we, we had we had super awesome goals for ourselves. We had like envisioned as parents. right 
and we and just as individuals like as a couple and as a mm-hmm. family like we had envisioned such uh an awesome life um, for ourselves, yeah. And then, how far have we fallen? <laughs> but just no, kidding. just to say, like, but look at the awesome life that we've been given. Yes, yeah. Compared to our en- envisioning, right? Yeah, right. And then trying to find joy, even though it's not what we had expected, but trying to find joy amongst the gifts gifts that God has given us, right? And just recognizing them as gifts, right? Like this, all is a gift. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The burnt dinner, the undercooked <laughs> potatoes, are all a gift. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, Ben. It's usually better than that, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think I don't know. That's the first tier for me of kind of evaluating my expectations of self. Is like okay. First, don't look at what we're able to accomplish or not. Just look at what you did and how you did it. And can you do it any better tomorrow if that's all you can do? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a great way to start growing in virtue. Um, but that's very much also from the perspective of a stay-at-home mom. Because the life and the world that I'm living in is often just within the walls of our house. right? It's within the chaos that ensues each like half hour of the day it's almost like you're living in a little cloister yes (laughs) that is i'm curious i think we should need to talk to somebody who lives in a cloister and compare notes because i am curious now that you say that (laughs) um what that's like but um, just the two little nuns running around like noah just running around a wall constantly what an actual cloister is like i'm so sorry (laughs) like for for the the mother in charge who bless her <laughs> but um no so like my my worldview is very small and all those teeny tiny things become so big because that's all there is right so, see i find that fascinating because you know you say that your worldview is so small nine times out of ten you're the first person to tell me that something's going on in the news yeah <laughs> I mean, I scroll quite often, but (laughs) yeah, I'm trying to get out of my walls, but, um, not the best way to do that. But, um, so my question is if that's from my purview of my experiences as a mom and wife, what, how does that translate to your experience? Sure. Yeah. I think that, uh, for men who are married to stay at home moms or vice versa, moms that are married to stay-at-home dads, I think it, uh, especially at first when you started staying home, uh, it was a huge mental shift for me to realize that your job was not to do everything at home, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I had to share in those responsibilities too. Um, And to give you that grace when things weren't done, because when I would come home, initially, I think I've gotten a lot better at this. I'd be like, okay, well, where's where's the food? <laughs> or like, or like, why? Like, I've been out of like my white shirts for three days. <laughs> like, what's going on? I mean, but then you know where the laundry machine is, you <laughs> yes. know? <laughs> yes, but that's what I'm talking about, yes. right? Yeah. Like being married to a stay-at-home mom has helped me really grow in patience, grow in responsibility, and grow in that ability to give grace, I think. Because I I feel, at least, maybe I'm wrong, that I am much more patient now than I was. Yes, I think you're the first person that, you know, tells me to take a chill pill and like recognize that it's okay you know right right and and i think it's helped that we've had lots of conversations about this that you know this this isn't totally on you that this is like a joint effort amongst us and that ultimately and we'll get to this in a future episode that ultimately everything going on in the house is the father's responsibility right 
So, Snaps. <laughs> so uh, well, we'll talk about that in a future episode. Just not, not now. We don't want to overwhelm you yeah. with deep theological concepts. But I think your points are interesting because I, I wasn't thinking of my question in that way. But you framed it well that like how your expectations of me have shifted mm-hmm. through our marriage. Which is good. But how like how do you view your expectations of yourself mm-hmm. in our home life right now with regards to the conversation we're having? Yeah, and I think that I had a very different image, especially when we first started dating and got had gotten married. I had a very different image of what it meant for me to be in my career, uh, for me to be contributing in the, in the way that I am at home. Uh, for our life to be completely different. I have expectations of myself all the time when I come home. Like, all right, I'm going to get the grass mowed. I'm going to get the bathrooms cleaned. I'm going to start three loads of laundry tonight. (laughs) I'm going to cook dinner as soon as I get home. I'm going to do all this stuff. I get home, and especially if Holly's already got dinner ready, like after dinner, I'm rolling around on the floor in the living room with the kids. (laughs) And then trying to get them through our, the bath time and then to bed. And then I do the cat stuff. <laughs> and then that's usually it. Mm-hmm. So all of my expectations that I've set for myself, too, have to be dashed away. And then the next morning, and I'm, I'm always like, it doesn't hit me until the next morning. Because usually the night of, I'm like, you know, I put a lot of effort into today. I think I'm good. <laughs> But no, usually when I wake up the next morning, I'm like, none of this stuff is done. I feel really bad. Mm-hmm. And and yes, I think that there is something to be said there about responsibility. However, I do overlook the fact sometimes when I'm being hard on myself, when I'm being very self-critical, that yes, the laundry could have been done. The grass could have been cut. The bathrooms could have been cleaned. The laundry could have been done. But I also got to spend an hour rolling around on the floor with my kids mm. and, you know, making them laugh and play with them and, you know, be able to be fully present with them through bath time and then bedtime because those are the only couple of hours that I have with them in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the only interaction that they get with dad. Right. And so being able to say, okay, I didn't do these things, but I think I did these things, these other things pretty well. Um, and sometimes it takes a lot more effort to be present. Sometimes it is super exhausting to get down on the floor and roll around with the kids. And sometimes I just don't have that energy. So I'll sit here on the couch and like <laughs> let the kids climb on all over me, right? <laughs> yeah. But being able to shift those expectations those short-term everyday expectations Mm -hmm. to be able to say i didn't get done what i wanted to but look at the good things that i did do today right and that brings up a good point of i think the key to having a healthy perspective in any facet of life right is gratitude um because without gratitude, you're not recognizing any of the positives, any of the good things. You're not grateful for anything that God has placed in your life for the better. Um, and it becomes way easier to then focus on all the negatives, right? And this is something that I'm not great at doing. Um, because I'm like a checklist person. And I'm like, look at all the things that aren't on my checklist. But maybe I need to start my gratitude checklist. <laughs> Um, to keep up with that because I do think that um, even just to write text a friend three things a night that you're grateful for today or keep it in a journal or pray for it as a couple at night like in gratitude for these things and recognize as a couple like look at this awesomeness that happened today amongst all the ordinary things right I think that's key for us too is that we need to work on that together and focusing on on what we're grateful for at the end of the day but also I wanted to say that like all of these expectations that we came into our marriage with and with into parenting with came from 
the way we grew up and then perceived what marriage was meant to be like. So that comes in part from watching our parents together. That comes in part from studying and understanding theologically what marriage is meant to be. And that comes in part from like experiences with children and what we hoped our parenting would look like. Um, and I think going into marriage the first like at least five years probably and then going into parenting you have to constantly recognize expectations you had and then let them go because you're in a whole different circumstance right now and like especially with regards to like our parents right um they i think did great we are both so grateful for our families and know that we would be nobody and nowhere without all of their hard work and dealing with us while we were growing up and supporting us as adults. Um, but I think we also recognize that like where they fall short, um, more so as adults too, like, but also more so as adults, we can give them more grace because we're like, Oh, this is hard <laughs> mm -hmm. and we didn't know that as much when we were kids kind of um, judging our parents right but I think um, I don't know like we can look at each other's family life growing up and recognize like I know your image of like going to work and then vegging out at night you know like um, kind of comes from like your family life experience because your dad worked so hard like that's all he could do right he gave all he could give um but I had very different expectations for you <laughs> from that going into our marriage um and I'm sure you could say and they similar suck. things <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> feel the weight <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no I know but one of the things that you you were talking about um, a couple of minutes ago made me think it's interesting to me that, and I don't know if this is universally a man thing or not, but I am actually very much a checklist person too at work. Hmm. But I'm not a checklist person at when home. it comes to the home life. <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. I, I just saw a post that I didn't read, but it looked interesting of somebody saying, why are guys more comfortable and confident at work than they are at home? Interesting. Yeah. Maybe a topic for a future episode. Who yeah. knows? We'll unpack that a little bit. But. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, that's interesting to me. Um, but no, I, I think that you, you speak to something unique to every individual. Is that that the concept of family of origin, right? And the way that, that those family of origins have formed us as individuals. Mm -hmm. So your family of origin... And my family of origin, both very good families, mm -hmm. very supportive families, both very loving families. We're very fortunate. Yes. Yep. But they've formed, your family formed one unique individual. My family formed a completely separate, unique individual. And now these two separate, unique individuals <laughs> have come together to create more unique individuals. <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's quite an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... And I, I look at that, too, from a lens of catechesis and understanding, like, where our parents were catechetically growing up or weren't at, you know, um, which I find super fascinating. <laughs> um, because I feel like somehow we broke the mold there. Like, it wasn't this this life that we have now, like, as Catholics was not passed on to us at this depth. Right. So I think it's fascinating how we got here, but also how we can now share that with our parents and how they're transforming and growing and learning um, is very cool to see. Um, so I think that their expectations, too, are shifting, at least with my parents, like, of where they should be in their faith life and and where maybe where they fell short with us growing up um, because now they're starting to recognize theologically 
like what that looks like as a domestic church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kind of touched about that uh, on that in our first episode about the catechetical formation that we received from our families in, in early adolescent years mm-hmm. in that we found that it was severely lacking. Right. Um, I do think the Catholic guilt was there. Yeah. <laughs> because... There you was, had the Catholic guilt. You just didn't know why you felt guilty. Right. You're just like, I am. I am wrong. I am bad. This is not good. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I think. So, taking that, all of that, just to wrap it up in a bow, and just say like, focusing on. The things that we do accomplish with gratitude, and doing them well, is the first kind of baby steps towards growing in virtue yeah and just because you don't accomplish everything that you set out to do doesn't mean that you're a failure doesn't mean that the day is a waste right but if you do these small things with great love you plugged in my my favorite saying (laughs) i tried (laughs) and it worked that was good (laughs) but no so if if you do small these small things with great love then you've accomplished everything you needed to do today. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is something to be said about that. Right, and letting that be enough. Right. And so giving yourself that grace in that moment to say, okay, I didn't accomplish everything that I set out to do today, but I did these things really well. Mm -hmm. And so I can look on today and be very proud of what I did. Right, and with grace, the grace piece is also recognizing that it's not just me doing these things. Like, God is present. I cannot accomplish any of these things or do them well or with virtue without God. Right. Um, so that is all well and good. Totally agree. Good baby steps. Here's where my conversations and thoughts have taken issue. Because outside of those little things... I do have other lofty goals, right? And I set out to be somebody I'm not currently, but I want to get there through baby steps one day. And we're taking all these measures to grow in many different ways, right? As parents, as a couple, in this podcast, pursuing an online presence for, like, who knows what's going to come of this, but we have high hopes, right? That's kind of where people seem to be like you shouldn't aim so high or like maybe this isn't the season or you know your your thoughts should be maybe on other things and it's not in a malicious way right and the way that you said it yesterday was that that you felt that perhaps people saw it as an obligation rather than something that you wanted to do so it's a goal that you don't feel heavily responsible for, but it's a goal that you shoot for. Right, yeah. I don't feel like anybody's placing these things on me. I don't feel like it's a burden to want these things. I genuinely just want to pursue them. But I think, too, like their comments in a very loving way come from this idea, right, of like, focusing on what we can accomplish in a day and being grateful and doing it well. So how do all my other goals <laughs> fit into those things, right? Do I just have to let them go? Do I have to, as a struggling, tired, stay-at-home mom right now, forget about all these other th- hopes that I have? You know, that's kind of where I'm like, I don't think that they're mutually exclusive things to pursue well how do you feel when like for example like there was a right after i had gotten sick there was a period of like three weeks that the blog post stopped yeah so that that was something that you wanted to do that wasn't the obligation that you had placed on yourself Mm -hmm. but it was a goal that you had set for yourself right um how did you react internally to not being able to to get that done? Yeah, I guess it is true that putting on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, in in that situation. Yeah. So okay, actually, in the moment of those three weeks, 
I really didn't think about my online stuff at all because you were really sick and then the rest of us were sick and then everything at home was behind and you know we were just struggling to keep up so I really wasn't thinking about anything else <laughs> because I just didn't have the mental capacity or energy um, but after the fact it was like oh why couldn't I just, like, for those one or two hours, one night a week, like, do the thing, you know? So I think in that regard, that that thought after the fact lends to, well, you're thinking outside of what you were capable of doing at the time. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, everything goes in waves. Our... Our abilities day to day go in waves <laughs> at this time of life. Um, so I do think we are very capable of pursuing goals that seem beyond our our everyday necessities as long as it's rightly ordered, right? So like if, if my priority remains in the home and doing what God put me here to do, and there is still room to pursue these other goods, then by all means go for it, right? But once that becomes like... Um, Your priority. Yeah, and it becomes like a oh, a burden, there we go, because you're, you're not able to. Other things. Yeah, yeah, right. then, it, then it's probably not, not the time or place. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and I think that that's a good thing too in that when we look to grow in virtue, there's a tendency to look at one specific behavior. And and sometimes when we set out to rectify one specific behavior, we have a tendency to diminish the, the growth in virtue that we've been able to build up through other behaviors that were kind of interlinked to this one thing, right? So being able to recognize that we have priorities that in this this specific case, like our priority number one is us as a couple, mm -hmm. us as parents to our children, us as sons and daughters, son son and daughter. <laughs> yep. But then uh, after that, like after all those needs have been met, okay, it's recognizing that okay now there's room to fit these other things in. Mm -hmm. so let's set out on that journey yeah it's all this fun balancing act that i've never been able to to master <laughs> yeah but yeah does that make sense though like yeah, i think so that it's okay for me to like want other things mm -hmm. and pursue them but it's not really okay to like measure my self-worth and where we're at in life based on my ability to accomplish them right now right i think that where we've gone with this discussion was like, or the, the, what do you call it? The moral of the story <laughs> is that in our lives, we have a tendency to become overly scrupulous mm -hmm. when it comes to our image of self. Mm -hmm. We tend to think that our need to grow in virtue means that we're not at a good place right now. But we need to realize that it's a journey. It's a process. It's in a spectrum. That, right. You're not going to go from being a hellbound sinner to a saint all in one night. Right. I wish we could. <laughs> but you're, we're not. Mm -hmm. And so this... So saying that where we're at now that we're not happy with where we're at now it is almost kind of damning the entire journey, right? Because I think we're better off now mm -hmm. than we were two, three years ago. Yeah. I think that we've grown two, three months ago. Right. Yeah. That we've grown so much together, we've grown so much in family life that like having that negative image of this time now takes away so much from the present moment of the gift that we have to share with each other, 
but then to share with the world, right? That's what we're doing here. And it's insulting to God, too, for what, what he has done in our lives uh, and that we're oh. not grateful for it. That was the couch, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> in case anyone caught that audio, <laughs> it was just our old couch creaking. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I wanted to say, too, that, like, I don't know, when I look at the saints I and read about different saints, it does feel like some of them were often scrutinized for wanting to pursue what was thought of as, like, a lofty goal. And, like, why would you even pursue that? Like, um, and they were kind of like, watch me. <laughs> because they knew the goods of it and that they were going to grow in virtue and share God's love by pursuing this right so that's kind of how I feel and again like I don't know I just kind of want to clap back and be like watch us accomplish all these cool things so long as our family is centered (laughs) right Mm -hmm. in the middle of it yeah so I think that our weekly homework assignment to all of you that are listening (laughs) will be what are the ways in which God is blessing you right now in realizing the great gifts that he's placed in your life but then looking at where you're at in life, where do you want to grow as a family unit that you find yourself in? But then personally, what virtue do you do you think that you need to exhibit personal growth in? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that that's where the, our conversation went yesterday. Yeah. And we're happy to share that with all of you. Yeah, and I'm just curious, like, do you guys agree? Like, do you think... That Catholics have a tendency, like, in our pursuit of virtue to be over-scrupulous and, I don't know, is it is it bad for us to constantly be measuring ourselves in this way? Or is this a good thing? Yeah. And one shameless plug before we end today. Uh, if you go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's right now, it's all fall stuff and Halloween stuff. So uh, we're going to jump on that bandwagon what? and say... <laughs> If you are looking to prepare yourself for All Saints Day, uh, Holly has a wonderful website where you can buy your specialized t-shirts for your favorite saint. (laughs) I was like, where are we going with this? It is not fall. I do not jump on that bandwagon. November 1st is right around the corner, folks. Oh, my goodness. So please go to diaryofadollarhide.com and just take a look at what she has. You can also find her on Etsy. I mm-hmm. don't know what your Etsy shop's called. Same thing. Diary of a Dollar Hide <laughs> on Etsy. Yep. So please consider taking a look at that. And she does really have a lot of cool stuff. Um, <laughs> Thanks. I'm just holding out for the long sleeve tees. She's promised Ooh. me that one, one time or another they're going to be coming down the road. It's been slow going, but we're getting there. Right. I'm focused on other goals right now, Ben. I am grateful for that. <laughs> But I'm also, I would also like the long sleeve tea. Noted. Okay. Yeah. Well, please join us next week when we uh, hopefully have a better topic for you. <laughs> but we, uh, we don't know what that is yet. No, but we, but... we look forward to finding out with you. And we definitely appreciate you joining us for this journey. Please leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe. You know, we're on all major podcast platforms and we're on YouTube now. So just subscribe and You'll yeah. automatically find out when uh, there's another episode that you can yeah. listen to us rant for. Uh, Just do it. Just subscribe. Almost 45 minutes. Almost 45 wow. minutes that you can listen to our <laughs> luscious vocal cords. So sorry, but we really do appreciate your listening. Yeah. And appreciate you uh, growing in, in the domestic church life with us. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.